Well, second step is where our first very important concept comes. And we are talking about the constant Q transform. If you are familiar with the Fourier transform, if you are familiar with signal processing, that's okay, it makes things much easier. But if you're not, um, well, it's, it's not easy. You need some mathematical background, some uh, signal processing background to completely understand. But you still can use it because uh, Librosa already have this tool implemented. You need to understand the parameters, how to call this function, and you understand what it returns. So uh, you can still use it, yeah? In very, very general, a very, very general idea of the con constant Q transform, as the Fourier transform, it also transforms the time domain to the frequency domain. But to understand a bit better the difference between the uh, constant Q transform and the Fourier transform, uh, I plotted here on one graph. So we are using 128 beams. The beam numbers are here, beam 0 until beam 128. Here is our frequencies. Set the frequencies or the frequencies of each beam. On the Fourier transform, we see that each beam, the frequencies of each beam are linearly spaced and the bandwidth of each beam is constant. Yeah. The Fourier transform is very powerful. It's, it's, um, it, it's a very, very powerful tool. But it's not how actually we listen, and it's not uh, how uh, musical notes are related together. Yeah. Therefore, I am using here, and a lot of uh, researchers, they also use uh, the constant Q transform. The constant Q transform has these characteristics that the, 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 fre the, be the frequencies of the beams they're ex exponentially separated. And each, the width of each beam, they're more like uh, multiples of the width of the previous beam. Yeah, it's in a very general uh, way. Uh, you can read about the constant Q transform. Uh, you should check the Librosa um, documentation about the how they implemented the constant Q transform. And I also recommend this website. It's called Music Information Retrieval. It's from uh, Kama, I think is uh, Stanford. And uh, they have great tutorials on the music information retrieval. There is this part of the constant Q transform. So this is how it looks like. Uh, and one interesting point is like uh, this curve here. So we have a blue circles and green triangles and they are almost overlap each other and i'm plotting the center frequency of musical notes and the center frequency of the beams of the constant q transform and we can see that we almost have a map that uh, for each musical note the frequency relates to the uh, the center frequencies of the beams of the constant q transform and this is how this is what we are going to use yeah um so the conclusion is that let, let's think in very general terms the constant q transform can be seen as a future bank which each frequency of the the um, the frequency of each filter is exponentially separated and the width of each filter is a multiple of the previous filter. There is one way uh, how to, to basically understand the constant Q transform. So now we are going to use this tool. What I'm doing next is I'm defining a function to calculate the constant Q transform. So Librosa has already this function. You just need to pass the parameters. So, for example, uh, the number of beams. 
is a very important parameter and also how many beans per octave so in uh, in musical theory one octave we can divide in 12 um let's let's call it uh, notes yeah c c sharp d d sharp and so on so we're dividing each octave into 12. so by default the beans per octave is set to 12. if you go here uh, the documentation you see that the uh, beans per octave is by default 12. Another um, very important parameter, and if you mess up with this one, everything goes wrong, is you need to set the sampling rate you're using. Yeah, this is the fundamentals of uh, signal processing. We are using the sampling rate of 44.1 kilohertz. So uh, we're setting it here. And we're, we need to decide also how many beans. So, we have 12 beans per octave. How many octaves do we want to use? For learning purpose, I'm using here, uh, it's open for you to, to, to set, but uh, the, the, uh, the standard configuration is, it starts on C0 or C1. Uh, yeah, the default is uh, 32 hertz. So it's very low. If you already know uh, in which frequency range you are, you can set this and make it optimize it for your problem. But let's suppose uh, we don't know what's coming and we want uh, from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So we're, we're living like this. I'm getting the result of this function. It will return the magnitude in dB of the constant Q transform. Yeah, so for example, in this, in this example, we have uh, highest values in red, lowest values in blue. And uh, check out this tutorial also from Music Information Retrieval. And our second step here then was to define a function that will calculate the constant Q transform of the array that uh, we imported the, the WAV file. Another step is to get this constant Q transform and we can get a threshold of, um, we can set a threshold and we set everything below this threshold to a value. Why I'm doing this? Because to detect a pitch or a note, maybe we want to get rid of a noise. Maybe we want to get rid of uh, some uh, other harmonics that are present in the uh, in, in our audio, and we want to concentrate on the fundamental frequency, for example. So this function here I created is just to when I set a threshold. Suppose. Um, Oh, uh, the previous function will return me the maximum value would be 0 dB. So, for example, if I define uh, the threshold is minus 40 dB, what this function does is it takes everything which is lower than minus 40 dB and sets it to a mi minus 120 dB. Yeah. We can have a, a look here. Uh, later on, on the uh, graphical user interface, where we can adjust the threshold and we can see uh, different things. So, from this video, we've seen the constant Q transform, its relation to how the musical notes are related together, its comparison to the fast for, to the Fourier transform, and uh, there is one function to calculate the constant Q transform from the uh, audio file we loaded and another function that will give a thresholded version of the constant Q transform. So everything which is below a certain threshold, we will set it to minus 120 dB. Okay, so this is, was the second step of our uh, solution.